Intel has new AI chips coming, TikTok has added AI content labels, and much, much more. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Today we kick off with yesterday's big event from Intel where, surprise, surprise, the big theme was artificial intelligence. Now, Intel is not necessarily a company that you hear about at the top of the list when it comes to impact on AI or being impacted by AI. And indeed, one comment I saw on someone's post was, they need something. They are firmly in prove it territory. So what was their offering? Well, they are, as Reuters puts it, pitching the AI PC. There were a number of different announcements, but the biggest one, or at least the one that's capturing the most attention, is that Intel is promising a new chip to be released in December that will be able to run generative AI apps directly from a laptop rather than from the cloud. So this is the Meteor Lake CPU that Intel has been talking about for some time, but it finally has a launch date of December 14th. For the first time ever in an Intel chip design, there will be an integrated neural processing unit to, quote, enable power-efficient AI acceleration and local inference on the PC. In order to show off the technology, Intel had a demo laptop that generated a song in the style of Taylor Swift, as well as answered questions in an AI chatbot style, all while being not connected to the internet. Said CEO Pat Gelsinger, quote, We see the AI PC as a sea change moment in tech innovation. Now, in addition to Meteor Lake coming at the end of this year, Intel is also promising a follow-up successor chip, Arrow Lake, to come out next year. The company claims that their technology will rival the best from TSMC. And one of the things that's most interesting to me is that you can really see the business strategy start to form around this AI chip battle. While NVIDIA feels to so many to have the chip market for big data centers veritably locked up, it appears that Intel is trying to go the other direction and try to gain ground in the market for chips that handle AI work outside of those data centers. The company was very clearly emphasizing something that we've talked about extensively on this show, which is the belief, or at least the narrative, that enterprises are going to highly value AI hardware and applications that can be run on local devices without having to hand over sensitive data to third parties. Now, for the sake of completeness, the set of quote-unquote lake chips coming from Intel include Meteor Lake this year, followed by Lunar Lake, a preview of which was also shown off at the event, which was the first time it had been, and then finally Panther Lake, which is slated to arrive sometime in 2025. Now, the other big announcement that captured attention in the AI world was Intel announcement that it is building an AI supercomputer for Stability AI. Stability AI is, of course, the company behind Stable Diffusion, and Intel CEO said that when the supercomputer was complete, they believed that it would be the largest in Europe and among the world's top 15 supercomputers overall. Rather than NVIDIA chips, this will be filled with 4,000 Gaudi 2 deep learning processors, which is an implementation after Intel's 2020 acquisition of Israeli startup Havana Labs. Now, despite all these announcements, the market didn't seem all that impressed. Reuters reports that Intel shares were down 1.5% after the company's presentation. Does that mean that the market isn't as excited as it used to be about AI, or just that the market isn't convinced that Intel can compete in this white-hot space? Speaking of AI in the markets, ARK Invest's Kathy Wood has reiterated her call that Tesla is the biggest AI opportunity in the world. The argument is, of course, based on how significant she and her firm believe autonomous driving will be in terms of reshaping society. And I have to say that after Elon's recent full self-driving mode demo, my guess is that more people agree with her now than the last time she said this back in May. Speaking of Elon Musk, another one of his companies, Neuralink, has just opened recruitment for its first ever human clinical trials. Neuralink is, of course, a brain-computer interface, and in their blog post, Neuralink writes, We're happy to announce that we've received approval from the Reviewing Independent Institutional Review Board and our first hospital site to begin recruitment for our first in-human clinical trial. During the study, the R1 robot will be used to surgically place the N1 implants, ultra-fine and flexible threads in a region of the brain that controls movement and tension. Once in place, the N1 implant is cosmetically invisible and is intended to record and transmit brain signals wirelessly to an app that decodes movement and tension. The initial goal of our BCI is to grant people the ability to control a computer cursor or keyboard using their thoughts alone. The company is specifically looking for people who have quadriplegia due to cervical spinal cord injury or who have ALS. Staying on the medical theme for a moment, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, which is of course Mark Zuckerberg's main philanthropic vehicle, is building a significantly sized AI GPU cluster dedicated exclusively to medical research. The computing cluster will include more than 1,000 H100 GPUs, and in a press release, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative says that this will, quote, lead to groundbreaking new discoveries that could help cure, prevent, or manage all diseases by the end of this century. 
Now, if you're interested in this, I'll include a link to an essay by Priscilla Chan and Mark Zuckerberg that was published in the MIT Technology Review, where they talk about this virtual cell modeling system, which they believe will be key to breakthroughs in our understanding of diseases. Turning to a story that is more immediate in the world of AI right now, TikTok is launching that tool that was promised a couple months ago that gives creators the ability to label when they have used AI to create content. In addition to this optional label, they're also going to be renaming effects on the app that use AI to explicitly include that phrase AI in their name and the label that comes with them. Lastly, an interesting paper around the energy impact of AI. One of the things that we tend to see at the beginning of any new technology hype cycle are assessments of how much energy it uses. Now, this is a conversation that I have had numerous times on numerous podcasts, but it's jumping from the world of crypto and Bitcoin to the world of AI as well. This new paper argues, however, that the CO2 emission for an image created with Midjourney or DALI 2 is radically lower than the emissions from a human creating the same image, or even today's laptop or desktop computers doing the same. The study also shows similar results when it comes to writing a page of material. Now, of course, if there is a thousand X difference between how much energy it takes for a human to create a page versus ChatGPT to create a page, will the presence of ChatGPT 1000 X the number of pages that get created, making it all sort of null? Hard to say, but still it's an interesting little piece of nuance in what is going to probably become a political conversation. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you enjoyed it, chuck us a like or a subscribe, and I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.